Hello everyone. We are almost winding down for the Sabbath. That is Ekuku and Nkoru in my republic. In the Hebrew Igbo republics. Otherwise known as Igbo land. The land described here. Before getting into the Sabbath, to observe the rest, commanded by Chuku, I want to bring to us the report of two very important meetings I had this week that is drawing to a close. I met with the chiefs of the group called Zera Israel. It is a group led by Pastor Harun Kowans. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. You know I pronounce, I use the Igbo pronunciation when handling the English language. If I'm to pronounce it exactly, the name exactly as an Igbo, it will be Pastor Harun Kowans, the leader of Zera Israel. Kowans is an African American of Igbo origins. He has begun the step that every member of this family, Igbo born, when I say Igbo born, I mean those that did not leave the land that Chuku gave us after our sins facilitated our exile from the land of Israel. The land I call the Igbo land is the land Chuku gave us. The people I generally refer to as the Igbos as, are those Hebrews who we are not, who we are not forced out of that land. In America, we would call them immigrants. I usually try to distinguish between them and their brothers and sisters like Pastor Cowans, Pastor William Brown, Randall, Benjamin, so many of them who we are forcefully removed from the land. So, both those that are able born and those that arrived in the new world three to four hundred years ago will ultimately take this step. Study reconnection to Menana. So, Pastor Cowans and his colleagues, very distinguished people from what I could see from the meeting, had a very fruitful meeting filled with meaning we learned from each other. We agreed on how to move forward. We examined the contours of African American Igbo history. <laughs> and the land that historians documented that the Igbo suffered from the slave trade more than any other group. Why? Number one reason which we will continue to happen. We, we are not in very good terms with Chuku. By the way, I will make it very clear at this point. The people of Israel, be they from the Igbo community, be they descendants of Igbos like the African American of Igbo, African Americans of Igbo ancestry, Caribbeans of Igbo ancestry, from the Jewish community, from anywhere, 
are not necessarily sinning more than the rest of humanity, but because of that covenant entered into by Abraham, the seed of Israel have a higher responsibility to live righteous lives. So, when we stray from those commands, wittingly, when we don't make amends quickly, the causes of Deuteronomy 28 are activated. The discussion went to this extent, and I think for very good reasons, so that we would always bear in mind that we are under wash. Representing our men and our defenders, Pastor Cohen representing Zera Israel, we agreed to begin to work more closely with one another because each one teach one iron sharpness iron we will be stronger if we come together we will be stronger if we share ideas we will be stronger if we serve the lord together number one meeting over number two meeting you remember the rabbi mordecai ben abraham that interacted that had a discussion with uh, the revered rabbi kavnieski if i got the name right that made a ruling about the Igbo people we had our own meeting had a meeting with Rabbi Abraham. It was very rich and fruitful too. We went into so many areas, including surviving culture that demonstrates that African Americans, or that a significant number of African Americans came from the Igbo people. As you may well know, I studied Crowdy. I regard Crowdy as one of my heroes. William Sound as Crowdy, the founder of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, presently Temple Bethel. I studied his religion and history. And some steps that Crowdy took, we are uniquely Igbo steps. We will not get into that now. If you want to know more about what I just said, pick up a copy of an African-American history from Israel through Igbo land to the Americas. I wrote it. I examined Crowdy's culture. And I also examined the religion and culture and history of the African Hebrew Israelites, African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem, Ahij, the group that was led by the departed Ben Ami Ben Israel. Some of the things they did will remind one of what the Igbos will do. But then we had a discussion about a product of culture that you can touch, you can feel, you can see, so you cannot argue against it. By 1970, 99.9% .9 of the people called Igbo people today we are completely penniless. 99.9% did not have a dollar to their names. Everything the people worked for was willfully destroyed. One third of the population was killed. The Igbos were penurious. Nigeria took everything, took one third. 
the people dug deep into all the reserves, including one of the reserves you find in the Hebrew Bible, Eba Boy, Eba Odibo, that produced the world's largest business incubator platform. The people dug into it. By 1980, the ethnic group that was marked for destruction rose like the sinks, constituted the larger population of the middle class of Nigeria. That was an ethnic group that lost everything. Cross the oceans. Go to an African-American history from Israel through Africa to the Americas. Writing this book was a journey of tears. The African-American wish a very large and significant portion of their members are Igbos <laughs> pass through the kind of deprivation that only very few people in this world will pass through. Their languages, their culture, we are all taken away from them. And without culture, what is man? Culture gives you direction. It is the road map. But today, this group commands, 11, commands the 11th largest economy in the world. They have produced individuals who defined areas of life. Michael Jackson had no peer. Muhammad Ali had no peer. Tyson had no peer. You want to go back? You want to go back? Talk about Joe smoking Joe Fraser. Talk about them. They control the 11th largest economy. I have met them in college. In colleges, they are among the greatest thinkers you can think of. I'm talking of African Americans. Dr. Sowell, Walter Isaac. Walter Isaac, I, I hope you are hearing my voice. This rising like the Sphinx. Is Igbo. Rising when everything had been taken away from you is Igbo. That African Americans can cast away the pall of sadness, can look into the future with hope after suffering for centuries is something you find only among the gifts of the people of Israel. We had this conversation. I had it with Rabbi Mordecai Ben Abraham. Then, how are we going to ensure that this coming together has meaning? I assured both groups that I had I held a meeting with that what is going to be happening now will be significantly different from what happened when some of our brothers and sisters from both sides of the pond, the TD Jakes, the Forest Whitaka, and our brothers and sisters in Nigeria came together. What is going to take place now will be significantly different because women are now will be involved. My favorite theorist of religion Emil Durkheim theorized that what differentiates us from animals is our inability to generate religion. T.D. Jakes, Forrest Whitaker, they visited Igbo land, but 
Omenana was not there, Omenana was not factored in to make sure that they really became one with the people that brought them to Igbo land. But with the agreement that Omenana, the religion of biblical Israel, is the glue, the meeting between the Hebrews or the Igbo, who, um, well, let me use a term most of our people will be comfortable with. The Igbos, who are still more connected to the 29,000 square miles of territory called Igbo land, and those that left that territory during the tragic period of the trans uh, uh, transatlantic slave trade, the meeting will bear fruit because Omen and I will make sure it does so. On this note, I will pause, but not before repeating what I had always said. Please, please, please subscribe to this channel. It is ours. It is yours. It is mine. What we learn here are things that we would not learn anywhere else. People want to continue saying to us, this is who you are. At this channel, we have refuted that and we have come out with concrete evidence about who we are. Support this channel by subscribing. Ask your friends to subscribe. Share these posts. Buy our books on Amazon. Please buy those books. Anytime you buy any of those books, you are making a very important contribution. Because from the proceeds, we will continue to print these books in Igbo land so that our brothers and sisters operating from there can get them at subsidized rates. On this note, I repeat, Shabbat Shalom, Israel. And reconnect with you after Shabbat. Thank you.